Charlotte? What could she want with Lapine Pauline? Pretty please with the cherry on top, Charlotte. Journalist extraordinaire. Please tell me you're joking. I read that a gang of criminals tricked the Gardamex by disguising themselves as blubber beasts. It's true, isn't it? It has to be. I've invested all my savings into graph adversarial technology and even taken out a sizable bank loan. I'm begging you, begging you like the beggiest beggar in all of Begdom. Okay, okay. I need you to calm down a little, Miss Lapine Pauline. I admire your passion for your research, and I don't mean to dash your hopes for those, um, big ticket orders. But I'm afraid I'm not joking. The Blubber Beast incident was a short story mailed to us by an anonymous amateur author, written in the style of a true story. Oh, Paimon sees what happened here. Sounds like the report Lapine Pauline read in the Steambird wasn't in the news section after all. Funnily enough, I actually remember being in a meeting where the editing team was debating the potential risk of misleading the public with this story. They even went to Maison Guardianage for advice. But to our surprise, they fully supported us printing it. They figured that the false intel would be a great way to dupe potential criminals into wearing ridiculous costumes when breaking the law. In truth, Gardamex are extremely sophisticated in their capabilities. They can identify criminals just as reliably as the best human guards, so a crude disguise isn't going to get you far. If anything, it'll just make you stand out all the more. Since we ran that story, the Maison Guardianage has made a slew of arrests, including, uh, one phantom blubber beast, a titanic red-crowned finch, and a specter man. So I knew this story had helped out law enforcement, but this is the first time I'm learning of an innocent citizen being deceived by it. And investing so much more of for nothing. <laughs> uh oh. So Lapine Pauline's whole research project is based on a fictional story? Which means we're not gonna get a big bonus after all. But more importantly, she's gonna lose everything she's invested. Traveler! Paimon! You're back! I was in the area taking some photos for a story when I got to talking to Miss Lapine Pauline about her research. She told me about your collaboration. She was hoping I could write an article to spread awareness about image recognition technology. She even paid me for the article and gave me one of her prototype devices before I could get a word in. I unfortunately had to dash her hopes, and I'm afraid all your hard work was in vain too. She's desperately trying to find a way to rescue the project and get you the mora you're due. I've tried to let her down gently, but she's finding it all very hard to accept. This is a new situation for us, too. It's such a pity. It seems like the author was only trying to make the story interesting, and the Maison Guardianage only had Fontaine's best interest in mind. Wait, Miss Lapine Pauline, what are you doing? I'm going to pick a fight with a Gardamech, head to the opera at Bicles, and get a one-way ticket to the Fortress of Meropede. That way, I won't have to repay my debts. It's the only way I can afford to keep on living. Whoa, there's no need to go that far. I mean, come on, look at you. You wouldn't even dent the Gardamech's armor. In all likelihood, they'd only hold you up at the Maison Guardianage for a few days before letting you out, and then you'd still have to repay your debts. Actually, instead of going into the technicalities of that, how much did you actually invest? How bad can it really be? 
270,000 Mora. Okay. Well, escaping to the Fortress of Meripede over a sum like that seems like a last resort. Surely there must be other options. Not anymore. I used to be an equipment supplier to the Fontaine Research Institute before that blew to pieces, and now I'm just a small-time engineer. I scraped together some savings over the past few years, but I put every last Mora into this project, and now I'm left with nothing. It's not just my savings that are gone. It's my whole future as a graph adversarial technology specialist and my dreams of becoming a billionaire one day. <laughs> my life is over. Don't despair, Miss Lapine Pauline. I think I know a way for you to turn this around. This prototype you've given me, the camera lens for image recognition sample collection. It's really quite something. The rapid focal length adjustment is a very useful function in its own right. It's sure to make many journalists' jobs much easier. In fact, I'd say it has the potential to revolutionize Fontaine's news media. So your research efforts thus far are by no means in vain. The technology you've developed may have many applications that you've never even considered. <sighs> Really? Absolutely. I've been working as a journalist for the Steambird for a long time now. No one understands the issues we journalists face on a day-to-day -day basis better than me. So keep calm, take heart, and start thinking about mass production. In the meantime, I'll show your invention to all my colleagues to drum up interest in your product. I can't believe it! If this is true, then... I can look into setting up a whole camera lens development pipeline. My big ticket orders and billionaire aspirations are still in the cards. Oh, maybe I should consider taking out another loan. But that way, I can rapidly improve the lens production process, be the first to market, and prepare to battle for dominance in the camera industry. Come on, stop daydreaming about your pipelines for a minute. Just take it one step at a time and see how it goes. There's no sense in putting all your eggs in one basket before things are even off the ground. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can probably speak to some people I know and license my image recognition device to a workshop to raise some funds. I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner. There's no time to lose. I need to get to work. Early bird gets the worm. Uh, can you believe her? She just ran off! Paimon's pretty sure our vice went in one ear and out the other. It's understandable. When inspiration and passion strike at the same time, it's all too easy to throw yourself headfirst into your work and forget about everyone around you. A lot of journalists are the same way when they're first starting out. But don't you worry. I'm gonna write an article on all this and I'll be checking in on her regularly. Her research has the potential to benefit the entire journalistic community. I'll give her plenty of input to stop her from going down any rabbit holes and make sure mass production of her lens can begin as soon as possible. It's reassuring to know that you'll be looking out for her, Charlotte. Actually... You know what? Why don't you two take this prototype lens? I'm sure you'll have plenty of chances to use it on your travels. It takes the right person to get the most out of a new technology. In your hands, it's sure to capture some amazing sights. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. No bonus, no biggie. This makes everything worth it. You're welcome. I got something out of this, too. The beginnings of a very interesting news story. The boundaries between real news reports and news like fiction must not be blurred, even when there's a compelling justification for doing so. Yes, that's how I'll phrase it to the editors when I give them my feedback. Let's hope we don't mislead any more well-meaning citizens in the future. <laughs>